Welcome to Freshly Recapped. Today, I'm going to recap the movie, Kantara, a movie about a man who fights for his lands and his forest gods. Enjoy the video and watch out for the spoilers ahead. The movie begins with a flashback to 1847, where we meet a king, who despite all the riches in his life, is not at peace with himself. So he leaves his kingdom, and visits many holy places and meets as many teachers in his realm in search for meaning and peace in his life. But he does not find the answers he is looking for. While returning to his kingdom, he enters a forest and hears the sound of Gugara, a local musical instrument, and follows the sounds. He reaches a patch of a land in the middle of the forest where he finds a sacred stone. Oddly enough, he finds the answers he is looking for all this while and drops his sword. Later, when he asks the villagers for the holy rock to take home with him, he finds out that the rock is protected by Panjali Daiva, living inside a shaman who protects the villagers living there. So, the king makes a deal with Panjali to take the stone with him in exchange for donating a large portion of his land to the villagers. However, Panjali warns the king that should his descendants ever try to reclaim the land, they will face the wrath of Gulaga Daiva, a fierce spirit who is Panjali's companion. The movie then shifts to 1970, in the middle of the Kola festivities in the village, where the king's descendant tries to persuade a Buddha Kola performer, who is possessed by Panjali, to make the villagers give up their land. The performer refuses and warns him that he will die of blood vomiting if he attempts to do so. The descendant doubts the authenticity of the performer's possession by the forest god and challenges him to disappear if he is really Panjali. The performer runs into the forest and vanishes out of thin air, leaving only a circle of fire behind him. We see his son Shiva stands in the circle of fire as he looks for his father. Soon thereafter, as predicted, the descendant of the king dies mysteriously a few months later. Now in 1990, we meet Shiva in the middle of a buffalo's race competition. He is now an adult since the day his father disappeared in the forest. When having clearly won the competition he is denied his first prize, he confronts the showrunner and beats the men of local landlord Devendra who is also the descendant of the king. We come to know Shiva has all the vices of a brute man. He is a gambler, a womanizer, a ganja smoker who likes to get high, and hunts for wild pigs in the forest in his spare time. Having denied his medal, he goes to Devendra's house who gets him drunk and gives him the medal he clearly won earlier. Not soon thereafter, when an honest forest officer, Murali, arrives in their village, he gets a taste of how things are handled in the area. Some of the poachers from the village offer him fresh pork meat as bribe for letting them hunt in the forest. While refusing the bribe, he thrashes them for daring to bribe a government official. However he is asked to tread carefully in the village as it is a sensitive area. We further come to know Morali is tasked by the government to help convert the villagers' land into a forest reserve, so the trees and animals in the forest can be better protected. However, he faces opposition from Shiva. It does not take long before Shiva and Murali have a rivalry that escalates into a conflict between the villagers and the forest department. Shiva also falls in love with Leela, whom he helps find a job in the forest department. Leela also develops feelings for him, but she is unaware of his involvement in illegal activities such as smuggling sandalwood and poaching animals. Later at night, as the villagers are in the middle of their Kola festival, we come to know when his mother asks him to show interest in the custom Shiva is not interested in doing Kola, and would rather have his younger brother Guruva perform it, after what has happened to his father. Just then Murali walks in and asks one of the men there to stop bursting firecrackers in the middle of the night, as it might disturb the animals inside the forest. However, Shiva dares him to stop him. Before things escalate further between them, Devendra intervenes, but Murali threatens them to ban Kola from next year if they keep making all the noises. Meanwhile Shiva keeps getting haunted by the memory of losing his father in the forest. Murali, frustrated with the way the villagers have been ignoring their eviction notices for their illegal lands, decides to raid the village and forcefully take possession of the forest lands. However, Shiva, hearing what is happening in his village, comes running and starts beating all the forest officers, throwing them around. But Murali puts an end to the fight with a shot in the air, and another one barely scrapping him in the ear. He warns him that he did not miss his aim, and will shoot him if he interferes in the government business the next time. Later, at his home, we see Devendra, with the help of his lawyer, tries to get his papers along with the papers of the villagers in order ahead of their fight in the court. Shiva, while keeping guard on Devendra as he is busy with his mistress, is visited by his father again. He runs away in panic. Next morning, when his mother comes to know what he saw last night, she reminds him to not ignore his visions. And how at his age his father was always conducting kola in every village. 
she asks him to take responsibility and not waste time with his useless friends. As the conflict between the villagers and forest department simmers, we see Shiva and others train themselves in the forest, preparing to fight and not give up so easily. They even go out in the forest and kill more wild animals with a vengeance. Murali calls a meeting with the villagers and warns them that they are tracking every animal, and if they are harmed or if their numbers go down, he will start making arrests. One night, out on patrol in the forest, Murali is informed by Bhaskar, one of Devendra's men, that Shiva and his men are cutting down a tree not too far away. Murali decides to go after them. As he reaches their location, a tree falls down on him, injuring him badly. Devendra asks them to go hide in the forest for a few days and not come out till they hear from him. Even then he asks them to be careful as police will not stop till they arrest them. We see his visions are getting stronger. Shiva again dreams about his father while lying on the same spot. Murali, now fully recovered from his injury, decides to go after Shiva. It does not take him long to find and arrest them all, as they are all try to visit their families. Soon thereafter, we see them punished by the court and thrown in jail for crimes against violating provisions of Forest Conservation Act. Later that night, Guruva after hearing the sounds of Gugara, calls Devendra and begs him to help his brother get out of jail, he further tells him he senses some bad omen for him. Devendra meets him the next day on his way to his plot of land and asks him to hop on his car as he wants to discuss something with him. We see the village ironsmith Madhav sees them leave together. Later at night, we see a car drop the body of Guruva by his house as villagers gather around his body, unable to understand. Back in the jail, Shiva is visited by the vision of his brother crying at his cell as he gets the premonition of something being wrong at his home. Next morning, Devendra comes to the village and even steps inside Shiva's home to offer his sympathy for the loss of Guruva. He offers his mother all his help in catching the murderer and bringing him to justice, whoever it may be. Sometime later, Leela while visiting Shiva in jail informs him about the death of his brother, as he comes to know how he was murdered and his body thrown at their doorstep. Shiva mourns his loss. While waiting for the response of the villagers anticipating their cooperation finally, Murali is surprised to receive a reply from Devendra, and comes to know that all the forest lands have now been transferred in the name of Devendra. He goes to the lands records office and verifies the authenticity of the documents and finds it to be true. Later, he confides with Rajiv, another landlord, that now the only hope is his request for the conversion of lands into forest reserve. Once that is approved by the department, all of Devendra's documents will be invalid and he has to fight it in the court. Unbeknownst to Murali, one of his assistants unhooks the receiver at his office and calls Devendra. And Devendra hears everything he said. In any case, they decide to release Shiva as they will need him now. Later, as Devendra narrates a supposedly story to his son, we come to know it was him who killed Guruva. That day when he picked him up in his car, he took him to a big tract of his lands and offered him a piece of it if he helped him convince the villagers to transfer his ancestral land back to him. Convinced, as a living embodiment of Panjali Daiva, the forest deity, people would listen to him. However when he refused to lie and shame his ancestors he was murdered to keep their discussion a secret, and later dropped as a warning to other villagers. Once out of jail, because of Rajiv, Shiva finds out Devendra is calling him to his home, there, he throws him a big party for getting out of prison. He also apologizes him for being late to get him out before Rajiv and then warns him to stay away from him, as he is nothing but trouble for the village. Later at night, while all alone, he also tells him Murali is the one who murdered his brother, he is sure of that, but asks him to be careful this time, and let him take care of it. Shiva tells him it's his personal matter now and he is the one who should take care of it. After Shiva leaves Devendra washes his hands, as if he has touched a mad dog, and asks his men to follow him and leash him once he has killed Murali. However, Shiva in a twist goes to the ironsmith for a quick joint to soothe his nerve, who rolls him one for an old time's sake. As they smoke it up, High as a kite, Madhav tells him he saw Devendra with Guruva that day he was murdered in his car as he went. But he did not see Guruva with him in the car when he returned and found it strange. Now after finding the truth, he then goes to Devendra's house, and without an invitation, joins him at the table. He informs him he is now a free agent and does not work for him anymore. After he leaves, Devendra asks Bhaskar to gather all the men, and as a king, his time has come to claim what is rightfully his. While returning home, Shiva is again visited by the ghost of his father as he crashes his bike in the middle of the road. He sees a wild pig staring at him from inside the forest and decides to follow it. Soon, he arrives at the same spot where his father had disappeared years ago. There, he hears his father's voice who offers to show him the past and the future. 
Back in the village, they come to know that Devendra is now the owner of their lands. Murali gives them hope that once the lands are declared reserve forests, they can have a chance to negotiate with the government and can keep their lands. He also extends his full support in the matter. We see Shiva too has arrived. When he tells everyone that Devendra, their landlord and well-wisher, is the one responsible for killing Guruva everyone is shocked. They all offer to see him at his place for a duel. But he stops them from going anywhere, as we see a truck loads of people heading towards their village with weapons and tiki torches. Soon the lights go out as Devendra arrives with his men who have now surrounded the village. He reminds them his ancestor made a mistake in letting them stay in these lands in exchange for a rock. He asks them to take their rock and start evicting the place as the lands belong to him now. Sometime during the long fight we see Shiva gets beaten down by Devendra's men. But the Panjali Daiva shows himself again, and injects strength in his body. Now possessed with supernatural powers, shouting loudly, Shiva manages to go after Devendra's men one by one and kill them all, as Devendra watches in horror. At last he goes after Devendra and kills him too. The movie ends as Shiva too follows his father's steps into the jungle and disappears leaving a circle of fire behind him. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for more of these videos in future. Thanks for watching.